attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal End Compliance, a full service corporate securities and business transactions law firm. Today is the continuation in a LawCast series discussing NYSE MKT listing requirements. A company seeking to list on the NYSE MKT must meet minimum listing requirements, including specified financial, liquidity, and corporate governance criteria. The NYSE MKT has broad discretion over the listing process and may deny an application even if the technical requirements are met if it believes such denial is necessary to protect investors and the public interest. Factors the NYSE MKT consider include, but are not limited to, the nature of a company's business, the market for its products, its regulatory history, its past corporate governance activities, the reputation of its management, its historical record and pattern of growth, its financial integrity, its demonstrating, demonstrated earning power, and its future outlook. Once listed, a company must meet continued listing standards. In order to apply for listing on the NYSE MKT, a company must complete and submit a listing application including specified documents and information. The NYSE MKT has four eligibility standards that could be met to qualify for a listing. Each standard considers certain factors including pre-tax income, market capitalization, the market value of the public float, a minimum bid price, operating history, shareholders equity, the number of public shareholders, and the number of shares in the public float. Generally speaking, a company must have a minimum of $4 million in shareholders' equity and a minimum bid price of $3 to qualify for the NYSE MKT. In addition, a company must have 400 public shareholders and either 500,000 or 1 million public float shares depending on the standard of qualification. Also depending on the standard used, a company must have either 750,000 of pre-tax tax income for the last fiscal year or two of the last three years and a market value of public float of $3 million or a market value of public float of $15 million and two years of operating history or a market value of public float of $15 million and a $50 million market capitalization or a market value of public float of 20 million and a market cap of at least 75 million or 75 million in assets and revenues. Public shareholders and public float do not include shareholders or shares held directly or indirectly by any officer, director, or 10% or greater shareholder or their affiliates or family members. I'm securities attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal and Compliance and producer of LawCast. Should you have any questions about today's topic, please visit securitieslawblog.com and lawcast.com or contact me directly. Inquiries of a technical nature are always encouraged.